Hello everybody, welcome back to Age of History 2. We are continuing the Bedin run. First, Molly asked me for a non-aggression treaty. I said no and started preparing troops on the border. After grabbing a few more troops from the outlying territories, I declared war. I quickly took the border territories, then, you know, took the last three that were kind of just out in the weeds. I claimed all of the lands and then started the assimilation process. After the conquest of Mali concluded, I moved my forces to the eastern side and started colonizing uh, territories to link up with the surrounding countries. While, the, while these troops were moving, I started filling in the land to the south. This will be important later. With about 10,000 troops, I put them on the border with Yaka. I then declared war, and it was pretty quick. They didn't really have a chance to, you know, repel my invasion. I continued filling out the territories in the south so we could industrialize them later. I also continued the assimilation process from the um, prior conquest. I finished the colonization in the south, and then I moved to my south, my, mo my sub most southeastern point and colonized territories there till I linked up with the Congo and Tayo. I put fortresses on the border so I could defend them till I was ready for an invasion. To pass the time, I quickly invaded Borno. Bornu? Apologies for the pronunciation if I got any of that wrong. And I had my ally, Kono, invade Kat... Kat... Katisa? Uh, again, apologies on the pronunciation. Just to do cleanup on the boundaries in the north, to only have an ally in the north then. I started gathering up troops to move to the south to secure it. I also started industrialization, like we talked about earlier, in the territories that I had conquered in the west and in the ones that I had colonized. Most of it was building farms, factories, and libraries to, um, respectively, improve development, money production, and research. If you don't know, libraries give a boost to the research part of the game. While industrializing, I randomly got declared war on by Nindungo? I'm not sure on that one. Which had no physical boundary with me, so I quickly grabbed a standing army that was around the capital. And then I picked up a few more thousand troops in the capital itself. The war was quick. I took the two territories that were resting on the coast. And then I bridged the, the separated territories by colonizing one of them. And I took those ones. While I worked on industrializing the rest of my southern territories, my longtime ally Kono and Tayo, a country in my south, invaded me. The southern part was reinforced, but I had no such protections inside the north because why would I? They were my ally. I quickly counterattacked in the south and recruited forces in the north to defend against Kono until I could bring better forces. I took some loan out, loans out to bring troops up. The war in the south was under control, but the Kono war was a little more back and forth since I was caught off guard. Once I was able to recruit troops, I made big gains in the war against Kono. With the war in the south almost done, I cleaned up whatever was left of the Kono forces, and then the southern territories brought in an ally, so I was, so I was pushed back a little bit there. I didn't take all of Tayo's territory because I didn't have the troops down there and I was afraid that I was going to get pushed back far enough, so I brought them to the negotiating table, and got most of their territory. After assimilating my conquered territories and some military consolidation, I decided that I would finish off Tayo and, his, and their ally, but we were still under a non-aggression pact since we did peace. To pass the time, I recruited more troops to also knock out Tayo's ally. I also did some industrialization in the south just to kind of finish up that. I decided to link up my territories in the east with other countries. I built fortress. I built a fortress and a castle to defend it. I also deployed troops to the eastern province. During all of this, my non-aggression pacts with Tayo and their allies ended. Since both of them were were one province countries, it was a pretty easy war. I then colonized a few more provinces along the coast so I could move my troops easier, and so I could bot. I wouldn't get bottlenecked. It, there are a few reasons. I then started 
gathering more troops to invade the Congo, which was another big power in the region. I stationed them around the border territories. After my troops were in position, I declared war on the Congo. Along with, I didn't know at the time, Congo was at war with Burundi and Lubu. Luba? I'm not sure. My first objective was to link my north and south territories and armies. After that, I was... After that was done, I took hook-shaped territories that were left. It was a pretty easy war that took a while because it was a one territory wide, so I could only go one territory per move. While I was doing this, I was also increasing my standing with Aragon, a power up in the north in the Iberian Peninsula. This will be an important note later, so put a pin in it. I consolidated the leftover forces from the Congo War and moved them to one province. I then linked up with a country in the south that I would subsequently forget about and move those consolidated forces from the congo invasion to prepare for the conquest of luba i then remembered the country in the south and decided that they needed their existence card revoked so i knocked out the five small countries in the south i won't tell you all their names because that's just a waste of time i then maxed out my research development during this so kind of a side note but important i then decided that luba had to go but I found out they were also allies with Burundi, the most powerful country in the central continent. So, I disregarded that and invaded. I went after the south of Luba. First, the south of Burundi. Not Burundi. I went after the south of Luba first. The Burundis then declared war on me, so I invaded in the north through the one, through the one province that we had bordering. After knocking out the capital of Luba... And knocking out the rest of its provinces, I focused more on Burundi. The casualties in the north were a lot higher than expected, so I recruited more troops. Now, let's test your memory. Do you remember that pin from earlier that I said to put in? If you do, I'm proud of you. See, me making relations with Aragon kind of pissed off Castile, which in <laughs> kind of declared war on me. Since we did not share a border, I decided to focus on Burundi first. I moved half of the troops I had recently recruited and moved it to the coast, just in case they decided to try a sneak invasion. I also grabbed a few more troops around the capital. I then relaunched the offensive in the north to speed up the war. The southern front was fairly slow. Eventually, I had the upper hand on Burundi, where it was then it was just a matter of time before they fell. I claimed all of the territory I conquered. I think they had one province left, but it almost doubled my entire territory. Now it was time to turn my attention to Castile. I started to consolidate my forces on the coast. My two points I had troops at was my capital and on, on the coast in the northwest. After quite a bit of assimilation of my new territories, during all this cargo we decided that I would be an easy mark, so I kind of disintegrated them. Then Buta decided that they would have their hand in it again, and it didn't end well for them. Then... For the third time, a small country kind of ran straight into me, and I declared war on them too. But, but you know, I deleted them. It's not important to the overall story. I then moved the army in the capital out to the sea. I met up with the army in the north, and then invaded Castile's islands off the coast. I think it's called the Canary Islands now. It probably wasn't called that then, because... Actually, it might have been. Hmm. After that, I invaded the southwest of the African territories. I moved up by taking every bordering territory. I lost the army in the center, but it was ineffectual because they kind of disintegrated their own army at the same time. I put a, li I put a little army to take the lower territories that were kind of sectioned off. I took all of Castile's African territories and then went to the negotiation table. Now, I have one reason for this. If I would have gone into Europe, there would have been a lot more contenders to deal with, and I, and I didn't want to do that yet. Now, most of Africa is at least mine, or is it too weak to affect me in any meaningful manner? But there is one last main rival in Mal... M M Mamelukes. But we will take them down next time. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I This will be the second time I've done an Age of History 2 video, kind of in this manner, where I voiceover afterwards again if you liked the one where i speak during the game comment down below i can always do a little bit of both or keep doing this if you have any suggestions please do i'll take any like situational ones like what country should i play in this year or in another scenario 
Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!